Hi folks, Scott Sager with you again here at RTC TV4. Today you recognize this young man. This is Brian Johnson. He's the development director for the Fulton County Community Foundation, which is of course part of the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Housed right here in Rochester, Indiana. We are. Excellent. We are. So uh, we've had Brian in monthly, uh, been bringing us updates. Of course, last month's update was all about some of the great high school things you were doing, all the great awards you have. Of course, you want to get out to the website. That's on NICF.org, and uh, you want to check out all the great things that are yeah. happening there, right? Got a lot of things going on. Yeah, so, okay. Well, dig um, in. Tell us about it. A couple of quick updates. Um, of course, we're in the middle of Lilly Endowment's matching opportunity. Yes. Um, gift 7. Um, we have the opportunity to match all gifts to community funds, um, $2 for every dollar given. Got to love that. The community has been very generous. Um, to date, we've raised over $186,000 of the $250,000 that we need to raise That's great. for that. Then when we get to that $250,000, Lily will match it with $500,000. Nice. Do they just for literally example. send a great big check? Uh, they send a check. It's yeah. not. A, it's a normal size they check. Send big not, ones. Not when the they're big that check. big, yeah. they should send the big <laughs> check in the mail. That would be but fun. it's it's very appreciated, and of course that turns into about thirty thousand dollars every year. Okay. Additional funds that we can grant out to community needs and projects. Um, and the neat thing about that is we know it's going to be used here in Fulton County. Yep. We don't have to compete with other communities That's for great. it. Um, our towns throughout the community will use it um, community wide, mm -hmm. and it's neat to see how that will continue to go on to um, support needs in the community. Yeah, so, well, that, that's great so, stuff, Brian. Um, thank you to all the donors who have made it possible so far. We had, we announced this in in um, last October, mm -hmm. and it's just it took off and. Um, we have actually until the end of 2020 I was gonna to say. raise this, yeah. but I've been telling people, if you're planning on getting in on this program, you probably should make a gift before the end of this year, Yeah. Um, especially when you start looking at tax planning time sure. in an October, November, December time frame. Um, that's when a lot of gifts are made, mm -hmm. um, and so we kind of anticipate um, having a significant um, uptick on those giving during that time as well. So, yeah. Well, we want to max it out, folks. That's yeah. the uh, very important thing here. So whether you give in July or whether you give in December, um, I want to see us, you know, cap this off yeah. in December, be, right? Be nice. A year be ahead be of nice. everybody else and uh, have it done yeah. and get that check in hand, have it start making money for yeah. us. We actually have a list of the funds that are eligible for the match on our website, Great. NICF.org. Um, donors also have the opportunity if they're interested in creating a named community fund. Okay. Um, we have a lot of families or um, companies that have created mm -hmm. um, funds such as RTC Communications yes. that help support um, the community as a whole. Yeah. And so if you're interested in having something named, um, whether it be an honor, memory, or um, just want to help promote the community, mm -hmm. We'd love to sit down and talk to you about how that happens as well. That's great. And so what happens with these community funds, we talk about them occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, we are able to receive grant applications, and then um, we have a committee that looks at current needs in our community and makes um, grants based on those needs. Great. So they're very flexible dollars. They're dollars that allow us to react very quickly mm -hmm. to community needs mm -hmm. and changing community needs. Absolutely. You think about some of the dollars that we're spending today have been given 20 years ago. Some of these projects were not even on the radar 20 years ago. Absolutely. So it's neat to see how those funds continue to give back to our community. Oh, so thank fantastic. you to everybody who supported those. So. Yeah. And with those community funds, I mean, you can put things on the table like beautification, right? Yes. Um, yeah. So whether it's, it's signs or landscaping at a particular junction that yes. represents the community, yeah, those type of things. Yeah, and so just to, to talk a little bit about a couple of grants that have happened recently from that, um, we were able to support um, the Lake Manitow Association, provide $10,000 to um, the association to help them with some um, weed control and, and weed mapping out on the lake. Of course, Excellent. if you've been on the lake, you know that's always a challenge to find the balance between having enough and too much, Yes, <laughs> um, making it accessible so that you can make sure that yeah. boaters can get out yeah. and and enjoy the lake. Um, lake Manitow is really one of our biggest assets in the community. Oh, it is. And it's it's grown and just really has um, 
promoted the community, whether it be folks that come here for weekends, mm -hmm. summertime, or I know we have have a growing population that spend year round on Lake Manitoba. Absolutely. So, um, so that grant um, is going to help Lake Manitoba Association continue the good work that they're doing Excellent. to preserve that lake as a wonderful resource for mm -hmm. us. And thank you to the Lake Manitoba Association yeah. for taking the initiative to to be able to to control this of course we had the hydrilla yeah. situation a few years and that's under control now but um, the association just wants to continue to make sure that mm -hmm. um, things like that stay under control and that mm -hmm. our lake is here and and usable we don't mm -hmm. want to see it grown over by weeds right. and not be able to use it as a as a recreation facility so. absolutely it's great to have an organization here locally that is in charge of that management and, yes. and making sure that the lake reminds remains the vital resource that it is, both for pleasure and for utilization, yes. right? Uh, yeah. Drinking water, etc. So, yeah. uh, great job there. And uh, again, that hydrilla came in. They eradicated the hydrilla. There were yeah. some side effects to that, yeah. of course, of, of yeah. less plant growth or the wrong kind of plant growth happening. So, yeah. it's nice to have a group out there that. Uh, just managing that. Yeah. That just, way Brian and I yes. don't have to watch it. I, you know, I love the leg, yeah. but I can't watch that every day. So. Yeah, and it's, and it's one of those things where they're being proactive about yes. it and making sure that it, it stays nice That's great. for us to enjoy. In the That's future. a good investment of, of some of those community dollars. You it said is. there were others? It is. Um, one I wanted to remind about, we talked about this a couple months ago, the Blacketer Sports Complex. Yes. Um, of course, a little bit of history about that. Um, that complex came about, um, the conversation started in 1996 and actually turned into a sports complex in 1998. Um, Mabel Blacketer was a huge community supporter yeah. and you look around the community and it's difficult to find something that the Blacketer family has not impacted. Good point. Um, but she donated that land in memory of her son Brent mm -hmm. and um, how it now houses the Fulton County Soccer Association. Yes as well as the Rochester Girls Softball League, um, two really great organizations. Mm -hmm. um, and in the late 90s, early 2000s, the Community Foundation was able to support the sports complex with some grants sure. um, made possible by Lilly Endowment during the early years of building One endowments of the earlier phases. The Foundation. <laughs> so, yeah, so we were actually able to provide um, over $195,000 wow. in support for that as they were getting things up and going. That's great. Um, if you've been out there during a sports season, you know sometimes it's difficult to find parking because there's so many people sure. out there. Sure. Um, they estimate there's around nine to 10,000 people that experience the sports complex between the soccer side and the softball side um, throughout the summer. No kidding. Um, of course, the girls play, um, play there up until they start playing high school. Mm -hmm. And then um, with the soccer side, it's really preschool all the way through high school. It is. Yeah, absolutely. The high school and middle school teams play out there as well yeah. as all the youth leagues. And yeah. so it's just a wonderful facility to have in our community. They're also able to host um, a lot of out-of-town visitors. Yes. Um, softball tournaments in the summertime. Bringing um, income into Fulton County. Income, showing <laughs> off one of our, again, one of our, absolutely. one of our wonderful assets um, through the high school and middle school sports and yeah and travel soccer that comes through. So earlier this year, we were able to grant um, $61,500 wow. to that, and things are happening now. Of course, they were able to connect the softball facilities to the city sewer, mm -hmm. um, so there's less maintenance now for both the city and the softball complex. Um, and then the soccer side of things, they were using a concession stand that really needed some repairs. Mm -hmm. And using portable restroom facilities, not all that fun for kids or families right. that are that are here. And so this grant um, will allow them to build a new concession stand that also houses some restroom hey, facilities, no um, make things more um, ADA accessible yeah. for the soccer fields. Oh, that's and, great. and so it's neat to see that. So I was just out there the other day, and they're working on putting up. Um, building so okay if you're watching this program later in the month the facility may already be, <laughs> it may complete, be there but, um, they're they're hoping to be able to have these facilities ready for the fall soccer season that is fantastic um, so it's really exciting to see how this um, continues to grow mm -hmm. um, really a wonderful thing that mabel started and, yeah. and the folks with the 
soccer and softball yeah. got the ball rolling and it's it's neat to see how that has grown into a huge um, community impact so thank you to the folks on the blacketer absolutely um, organization for being able to get this idea put forth and and thanks to the community support in addition to what the foundation has provided mm -hmm. Um, there's been numerous businesses, individuals, organizations that have provided support to allow them to, to complete this project. So that's great. Really neat to see how that's going on. Good folks doing great things. And, yeah. and it might not seem like it, a concession stand in a restroom, but from a presentation standpoint, yes. when you've got 10,000 people essentially coming through there every summer, yeah. um, it's nice to have a good facility for that. Uh, again, the yeah. Porta John over in the corner, yes, you, you, you can have it there, but what a much better presentation. Yes. Uh, and representation of Fulton County and Rochester and everything we're about. So that's, that's and, important. And just allows them to do so much more absolutely and be more efficient and i expect hot nachos now <laughs> uh, they have them i can i can verify <laughs> that so that's great that's great so, well good stuff uh the yeah. soccer folks the softball folks and you know you got yeah the money is one thing and the contribution and the gifts are one thing but the number of volunteers that it takes to put that together every year year in and year out between the softball, the scheduling, the maintenance, um, yeah. same thing over there at the soccer field. So kudos to everybody out there who's um, utilized that facility and worked to make it better. And quite frankly, it's a wonderful honor to go out there and not be able to find some place to park. That means yeah. that we've built it, they've yep. come, and it's working yes. well. So uh, more parking and, and other things like that can always be worked out. Yeah. But to get it up and running and to have the volunteers behind it, what a great thing. So. Yeah, and it's just it's a wonderful asset for our community. Yeah. So um, talking about community funds, mm -hmm. one thing that, that our nice about community funds is they're flexible okay so we've talked a little bit in the past about preschool scholarships yeah. just a reminder that we do have those applications this is a time of year where families if you are not signed up for a preschool mm -hmm. and you're interested in sending a child to preschool and the financial aspect is a concern mm -hmm. um, we have scholarships available great check with the preschool it, it is for pre-k so that year okay. before you go to kindergarten mm -hmm. And we've got um, some local places around. We do. We have quite a few preschools mm -hmm. in the area. So if you um, are interested in that or not signed up for for preschool, the preschools have information okay. about the scholarships. I'd encourage families to check that out. Yeah. Um, we've provided over ninety thousand dollars in preschool scholarships no to help kidding. students over either 90, get into preschool or, in some cases, family situations change and are able to stay in preschool. So that's an amazing um, number. It's, for it's, it is. It's that's, it's really been a good thing, and it great. it really varies um, as far as what families can a, can provide financially themselves and this is something that we try and um, remove the barrier for that absolutely what a wonderful so thing so preschools folks yeah. if you got preschool age children opportunity for scholarships to help take care care of some of that cost for you we know how important preschool is for yes. these kids the head start yep. programs have, have proven to be so great in getting them a, a literally a head start on what's uh, yep. about to happen with their education so Great yeah, thing. It's neat to see that. And That's then, a lot of money. I can't get over that. Money. Almost a hundred thousand yes. dollars in scholarships yes. have already gone out. Yes. That is fantastic. For preschool students. So that's and and the difference that, that the preschools are giving us as far as feedback and mm -hmm. really kids being ready to walk into kindergarten ready to yeah. learn yeah. is is a huge advantage for that's us. A, that's a game changer in it any is. small community. Yeah. And that, that is a fantastic thing. So good job there, everybody. So another thing that we've used um, community funds for in the past month. Um, last year we did pop-up grants. Mm -hmm. We revised that a little bit this year and we're starting to do what we call an agency of the month. Okay. Um, kind of a thank you and encouragement for organizations doing good things in our community. And um, we're catching up with this program, but in May our agency of the month was United Ministries. Okay. Um, United Ministries is a local organization and it's really it's um, primarily groups of churches mm -hmm. that have come together to support um, needs in our community, and they do a number of things. They have a food pantry. Mm -hmm. um, they do Christmas baskets for families um, around Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And then a, a big part of what they do is actually emergency needs type yeah. situations, so helping folks with rent, with utilities, with short-term living expenses that may be a result of an emergency um, situation. So um, 
looking back in, in 2018, between their three branches, they were able to provide over $125,000 in support to no um, needs in our community. And um, it, it's one of those resources that a lot of times they are not only financial supporters, but they also provide information okay. or connection. So if somebody walks into their office and says, hey, I need help with, mm -hmm. for example, in the fall with heating mm -hmm. assistance, um, they can connect, they can provide some support, but they can also connect them with some other programs that will help provide support um, for those specific needs. Mm -hmm. So um, they also work with Salvation Army locally okay. um, to administer some funds. So they, they have a lot of flexible opportunities um, to serve in our community. So that's great. We're we're providing them with a grant of a thousand dollars to help them. No kidding. Of course they there's That was from May. For May. Excellent. And they've they've had some some significant need. Yeah. Um this time of year they get hit with a lot of requests. Okay. And also giving isn't quite as high as it may be during the holiday sure. time. And so um so they had some financial need there for this support of the organization so if somebody's looking for an immediate donation you may think about giving to united ministries yeah um, but we just like to say thank you to united ministries as an organization mm -hmm. um, providing support for those in need sure um, a good resource for us we get folks that call our office looking for those types of needs and while we can't provide direct support we can help support organizations like united ministries Absolutely. that that provide direct support. So congratulations and thank you to United Ministries for the support that that you provide. So, Absolutely. Well, great job there. So, thank you, folks, uh, for all you're doing. And thank yeah. you, Brian, for all you're doing. And and then the last thing that I wanted to talk about, we've I kind of wanted to take a little bit of time during each one of these programs and focus on some of the types of funds mm -hmm. that we get into. Sure. Um, a little bit of logistics. Of course, we talked about community funds, and those are those are funds that donors have given, and they don't put restrictions on it. Mm -hmm. They say, we want you to be able to make a gift to current needs in the community. Mm -hmm. um, but a little bit of a variation of that is we have what we call donor-advised funds, okay. where donors can make a gift to the foundation. They then take that, we take that money and invest it, and then they have an annual distribution, and the donors can make recommendations about where those funds go every year okay so it's kind of a small version of our community funds mm -hmm. but it's the donor that's making the recommendation on mm -hmm. that so it's it's a neat way we have a lot of um, families mm -hmm. that have set up donor advised funds or individuals okay um, we have some again rtc communications has a has a donor advised fund that help support different needs in the community. We have a few, um, First Federal Savings Bank, um, Pike Lumber Company, some different um, organizations that have set it up those funds mm -hmm. and use those to make grants to support needs in our community. So it's, it's really neat to see the flexibility of donor advised funds. Mm -hmm. We have some donors that say, hey, there's specific things that I want to support every year. Mm -hmm. And other times they want us to provide information to them about grants or potential opportunity. So it's it's really a um, a good situation for somebody that says, hey, I don't want to support one specific mm -hmm. thing, but I want to support the community. So right. so use of donor advised funds where they can make a significant gift. Sometimes we have people that will say, hey, we have some extra income this year. We want to make a gift, but we don't want to spend all of that right now. We want to be able to give this year after year. And sometimes donor advised funds fit those situations. That's so it's, it's it's neat to see we have about 25 donor advised funds in Fulton County. Okay. And so it's neat to see how some of those, like I said, they have, some of them have specific things they like to support. Mm -hmm. And others just will sit back and look at needs as they come in mm -hmm. um, throughout the community or as they arise mm -hmm. and, and, it's, and and you can hear and help them um because you're the community foundation you yes. kind of got your p fingers yeah. on the pulse of what yes. those needs might be and sometimes we can connect donors we get grant applications and if we okay. know what donors like to fund mm -hmm. we're able to direct those applications That's great. to some of those donors if they've said hey we want specific areas mm -hmm. Um, other times, like I said, donors have organizations or mm -hmm. needs that they hear about and they can direct funds um, to those needs That's as great. they come about. So it's just a really neat and flexible way for 
donors to support needs within the community. Yeah, donor advised fund, donor well, advised a, fund. a good vehicle by which to give back, as they say, and leave yeah. your legacy here. And uh, yes. I, I like that a lot. They've got all sorts of funds there at the Community Foundation. Of course, you can give Brian a call anytime. He'd be happy to talk to you about um, you know, some of the options that are available. Yeah. Um, and you know you are not a uh, tax attorney or an accountant, so yes. you always recommend folks check <laughs> yes. with those folks. Yes, for, of course, check yes. with your uh, professional, your financial yeah. professional. But um, you're always there to help facilitate, and you're always doing good things. How's Jay doing over there? Very good. Haven't seen Very him good. much. It's, it must mean it's he's busy. Busy, busy summertime. So. <laughs> That's great. Yes, that's great. We're we're out and about quite a bit, yeah. seeing different things, and um, like like you said, if you ever have questions about what's going on. Don't hesitate to get in touch with us. And yeah. Love to talk to folks about ideas or questions they may have about the foundation. Absolutely, absolutely. So anything you want to do, give them a call. You've got the information up on the screen. I can't thank you enough, Brian. Thank you, We've Scott. got Brian Johnson me. here. My pleasure. Uh, we'll see you next time here on RTC TV4. Thanks again for watching.